you're listening to We Burlesque the Podcast. I am your host, Victor Devon, and today I am on the phone with a fabulous artist that I've had the privilege of working with only briefly, uh, but I'm very glad to continue working with whenever the opportunity arises. Uh, this is uh, TZ Roosevelt on the line. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Um, now you're, you have a very specific niche that you, that you're mostly interested in. I know you have, uh, some variation to your performance, uh, interests and, and what you do on stage. But I think a lot of people, if they're familiar with you at all, they know that you have an affinity for history, specifically American history. Has that always been an element that has been part of your life that just sort of trickled into burlesque or was that the reason you went into burlesque? You know, it's really funny. I've, I mean, I've always been interested in politics, like uh, in in high school and middle school, because I went to into I went to a very small uh, school in upstate New York. Mm-hmm. So my viewpoints were always very uh, uh, poli- very liberal compared okay. to a lot of the other students' uh, uh, viewpoints. So I was very political, but as far as history goes, I remember not paying attention too much in history class, Okay. <laughs> which I think is a very kind of, you know, normal for a teenager to be like, I don't, I don't need this. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like me going back and it, like thinking about, oh man, I wish I really stuck with those piano lessons. Mm. Uh, and then now it's kind of like, well, I don't have time to do that. But uh, <laughs> I didn't get really appreciate I didn't really appreciate American history until probably about right, right around like um, 2004. I started doing okay. uh, improv, taking improv classes at Upright Citizens Brigade, and I was right here in the city, or is there another yeah, in chapter? Yeah, the city. Oh, nice. And then I then I did that for quite a long time, <laughs> but I realized that I needed to kind of broaden my mindset and it was very I felt like I mean I I was living in Europe for a while so obviously it was I was I was there like my mindset was broadened but I wasn't like a really a a reader (laughs) if Mm -hmm. that makes sense like I I wasn't like yeah I need like like I just need to read this history book and whatnot and what happened was I was working at at the time working at NYU while taking classes and when you work at NYU, you, you get all these great benefits, including um, uh, you can use the library. And so one day on my break, I was actually I was watching Deadwood on a C on like DVD. I had like mm-hmm. a portable DVD player. Uh, I was watching like Deadwood because I got like it. I got it from Blockbuster. Remember those. <laughs> Yeah, this, is, this is a moment in time. You're bringing up, talk about American history. This is American history right here. Yes. Portable DVD players. And, uh, DVDs, Blockbuster, all of, the, all of the major keywords. Right. And uh, I, uh, there, was a, I was, there was a scene that the, the doctor was going, I for, now I forget what happened, but there was like a, an illness broke out, and I, I was like, huh. I want to know more about this illness that broke mm. out. And I'm, like, wow, I'm, in, I'm, I'm near the library because I was, like, watching this in Washington Square Park. And I go, you know what, I'm going to go in because this was before you could go on your phones and sure. like, automatically get the information there. And then it really all started with my obsession through Deadwood. And then I became really obsessed with learning more about the Civil War and so I was, mm-hmm. like, checking out books on the Civil War, people's theses, and it, it, it's amazing to, to me. I mean, it just shows how much, ma- like, maturity you go through, where I was just consuming so much information, and then I was bringing that all back because it was always on my mind. I was bringing all that to improv, and mm-hmm. so my improv, and I got known for my improv scenes always being at the time. <laughs> About the Civil War, and then like after the Civil War, this is very current, like, very current. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and then like you know, and then it, you know after after someone would do a scene with me, and then afterwards I'd be like, well, uh, actually, what happened was 
uh, you know, custard and yada, yada, yada. And then the person who's doing the scene with, scene with me at, would be like, I don't, it's make-believe. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, pretend that this is not, uh, you know, we're writing history here. Uh, so that's really how it got started. And then I always have been interested, like, my, my whole thing is, uh, you know, based off of Theodore Roosevelt, so T.Z. Mm-hmm. Roosevelt. But I've always really been interested in uh, Theodore Roosevelt. And, you know, that comes also from living uh, near Albany. Kind of the Roosevelt's kind of, you know, are very, they're so New York. And you, they're, they're kind of everywhere in upstate New York. Uh, and Teddy is a very big, was a very big influence up here. So it, Teddy has always kind of been there throughout even mm-hmm. through my childhood because my dad used to dress up as Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> so, <laughs> he kind of looks like him too, so it's very it's very now now that I think about this, it's very weird that I have a burlesque persona based off of Theodore Roosevelt now based off my father. So that's a whole other thing. Uh, I mean, it's all it's all linear. It's all it's all together. It's all linear, right? And so he was in a and I remember I remember this uh very very uh, succinctly, where it's like my dad was in a play called Arsenic and Old Lace. Yes. And in the play, there is a guy who thinks that he's Theodore Roosevelt. Wait, you mean and all along he's not Theodore Roosevelt? No. I was he, led to believe. No, I know. Yeah, he's really <laughs> I'm familiar, yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, uh, and my, my dad, I remember going to rehearsal one day to see my dad, because my dad um, always wanted to be he, he he was a you know wanted to be an actor went to school for acting school and and uh, he but he, you know he did a lot of community theater and you know life happens and you go different ways and, but he was doing community theater which was good and he I remember watching him at rehearsal and he was I was like wow that guy that's not my dad that's Theodore Roosevelt <laughs> and I was so like in, like enam- enamored by this. Like, my dad is Theodore Roosevelt, like, the, and, like, acting, like, getting the voice right, <laughs> like, because Theodore Roosevelt's voice, like, if you listen to uh, recordings of Theodore Roosevelt, his, mm-hmm. his voice is very high, and if mm-hmm. you look at pictures of him, you know, this is how where our mind goes, where we're, like, judging a photograph, it's like, wow, I wouldn't, I've never expected that. We expect it to be that. rather gruff, yeah. Yeah, except like, think rough writer. <laughs> probably today's generation would assume he sounded like Robin Williams. Exactly. Yeah, that's, exactly. That is our, our closest version to... uh version of Theodore Roosevelt, right, <laughs> yeah. Robin Williams. And then after, you know, after I saw him, I was kind of like, oh, wow. You know, I didn't really know much about Theodore Roosevelt. I was young. Mm. Uh, and I was like, wow, who's... That's that's a great character. And I, I thought this was like a liter... I thought this was like a literary character. You know, I should mm. know... You know, it's obviously schooling up St. New York, I guess, isn't that great. But, uh... <laughs> I mean, to be perfectly honest, in 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 school, I mean, we covered uh, the medieval era. We covered, the, like, the Dark Ages. We uh-huh. covered, like, the Civil War. And then, like, we jumped to, like, Reagan. So, yeah, to be right? fair... Like, there wasn't anything... There in- was a time where we... Or in the Civil Rights Movement. But there was a yeah. time where we really avoided a lot. Like, I don't yeah. even think we talked about the Holocaust until like a very specific chapter of freshman year. We, we they, they were very delayed on a lot of things. Oh no, completely. And I, re- I, you know, it's funny that you said that because I remember uh, being in a social studies class mm-hmm. and a kid, a kid said that, Oh, the Holocaust isn't real. And I was like at an age where I was going, I, like just being very opinionated because I was, you know, going through puberty and and I was just like, yeah, this is my opinion and I'm a teenager and everything's right. But I knew that this kid was wrong because the Holocaust happened. Well, yes. Just, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I was arguing back and that, forth. That, <laughs> that is your citation. It's, like I yeah, actually right? know it happened because it happened. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like it's it, it happened, and I remember the teacher going, "Well, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion." And I think at that moment, I was like, "Wow, I don't I don't belong 
like, <laughs> like everything, I go, wow, this is, this is our education system. This is, I should be like investigating more and being with like-minded people, <laughs> uh, people who believe in facts, <laughs> like, you know, and not going through this like history book, which what you said, uh, basically, yeah, I mean, a majority of the history books still now, especially like come from, forgot where they come from, but they definitely omit certain aspects and, Mm -hmm. of our U.S. history. And, you know, the, what, I, what sucked was that if you weren't, you know, you didn't get the certain grades for AP history, you couldn't do AP history. Mm. And AP history obviously went more in depth because it was the people who were, like, interested in history and good at taking tests. Yeah. And, that's the problem. Know, you sort of have, with school, you have to sort of be good at everything to qualify yeah. for the, speci- the specialized elements. That was yeah. always troublesome for me because I was really yeah. great at English, but I was really bad at math. So me being uh, bad at math on. stopped me in a lot of good things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Same same for me, and it it and I don't think it really was like oh bad at math because if you think about it, I mean a lot of a lot of the formulas and things like that are like, it's like memorizing lines, really. Mm-hmm. Once you get the formula, you're like, oh, okay, I can do this. But because our school system doesn't want to, uh, to want to be, like, help kids who just need a little extra, like, oomph, mm-hmm. everybody gets kind of left behind. And especially with my, my school, like, I'll be blunt. Like, <laughs> yeah. like if, you, if you struggle I want to say a little that- bit, there was a specific act that was created to prevent children from being left behind. Oh, but I don't know. I don't know if that worked. <laughs> I forget. I something, I mean, maybe never happened. Maybe it never happened. Yeah, I don't, you know, I think that was like a, like a dream or something. I yeah, don't it was, it was like know. a Friends episode. I'm not, yeah. Yeah, Friends episode. So when you were doing uh, these improv uh, classes, uh, had you already been exposed to the burlesque scene? Or, no. I mean, that was sort of mid, that was sort of mid-2000s. I don't know if it was quite at the, oh, it's definitely not the level it is now, but yeah, I don't but know if it's I've, seen. I've always been at the aspect of, like, burlesque has always interested me, mm-hmm. and I, I think my I mean, real, it is a part of American history. It is, it is a, a It is a very significant part, yeah. Strong part of American history, and in, like, any major city, even, like, a, a city like Albany, had burlesque, uh, like, uh, cabaret rooms and things like that. Like, it's such, it's such a big part. And I didn't start really getting into burlesque uh, until I was dating this guy. Well, I kind of, I always, I read about it. I'm like, oh, this is really great. And I, like, heard of all these great people. Like, I heard of Joe Weldon, and mm-hmm. my uh, the guy that I was dating at the time was like, hey, do you want to go see this burlesque show on Coney Island? And that was, I think, around 2012, maybe 2011. I go, yeah, of course, I would love to see that. And and I saw this show, and I, it was Gal Friday, and she mm-hmm. did like this, uh, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember, because she, she did this like a, it wasn't like like the saloon girl kind of act. Like she, it, it, it was really cool, and the music was really awesome. And she, to this day, has stuck with me mm-hmm. specifically for that act. Yeah. And and also she was funny. She could dance, and mm-hmm. her costume was great. And then the the show also contained like it, it had some magic elements to it. I believe. Joe Weldon, I think Joe Weldon got into a, a like a, one of the, I don't know what the technical magic term is, but it's a box where you saw somebody. I think that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she was campy. I'm like, this is everything I love because I always love the campy. I always loved campy aspects of like movies. Like Ed Wood, I really, mm. you know, I love the Ed Wood. And I, and for me in that moment, it was like, Oh, I would love to do burlesque, like campy historical mm-hmm. burlesque, and and that's when I came up with my name. I always, I always had, I had, I never went through like uh, different names. Uh, I always had T Z Roosevelt as what I wanted to do because at the time too I was I was super obsessed 
with the Roosevelts and Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah. Got, thought that would be so funny, like in my head, so funny that this guy that's known for like being, uh, you know, <laughs> just like this horse rider. And yeah, it's great outdoors. Here, and man, like the, the, that time stereotypical like picture of manliness. And I go, that would be great if I was like, a burlesque performer after the Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that, that's it. And the, the, I didn't, the relationship didn't work out, but burlesque stuck, which Excellent. Was, well, that was the next yeah, important so, step. <laughs> like, and that, sometimes these really things, kind of, sometimes these stepping stones are just what they are. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Like, you got to go through this. And then you go, oh, yes. This is it. You're not right for me, but this show is. <laughs> like, this, this path. Uh, that I'm gonna take right now, and then it, and I now now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going oh I performed at Coney Island a bunch of times so it's so weird to think about how like life works in that yeah. way, and then I had the name for a while, and then I dated another guy who was not a very good person, <laughs> and I expressed my interest I would like to I'm like I think I'm gonna do burlesque. And he flat out said, oh, you don't want to be one of those people. I hang out with those people. You don't want to be, you don't want to, you know, you want to get up on stage and show, you know, everybody your breasts. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be that. And, you know, now I'm a little more, I'm more mature enough to say that's a bad, <laughs> that's a red flag. Yeah. And uh, hightail it out. But you know, you you know, life experiences, right? Mm. So, I, I I that was you know, you get your red flag, and you're going, okay, well, that's a weird thing to say, and that's abusive behavior, and then that relationship didn't work out, and then I took Joe Weldon's class. <laughs> like, <laughs> was I was like, fuck this, dude, uh, and I did, and I and I remember I had her class, and I was like, I'm T.Z. Roosevelt, and I wanted to do Theodore Roosevelt act, and everybody was like, wow. <laughs> like, like, I was like, like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, Joe has probably heard everything in in uh-huh. her time because she has helped develop uh, countless performers who have come and go, and I mean, she has has sort of become like um, a a backbone figure in yeah. in not even up and coming burlesquers, but like all facets. And yeah. sort of like a, a, a godmother to to a lot of us, and I have a feeling that that may have been a first. Yeah. That, <laughs> that may think, of all the times that may have been a first. I think so. And she, I remember she going, "Yeah, cool." And then everybody else in the room was going, "Wow, that's awesome." And it and it felt like, oh, okay, because in improv. You know, I had I had my friend, I had friends, and I and I, you know, you have your cliques and your team, and and sure. you do all that, and you build relationships. But I think that class was the first time where I felt like, oh shit, I really like belong, <laughs> like mm. doing doing this, and with all these other people who are interested in doing this. And you know, I've done. Stand up comedy. I tried to do the acting thing. I, you know, tried to do the writing thing. Uh, but burlesque has stuck as yeah. my art form. And, and it's going to continue, especially now during what's going on. In well, yeah. Yeah. Society. Do you remember, do you remember who was in that first class with you who are, who might still be working? Uh, I always sure find that somebody. interesting. I always find yeah. that interesting because whenever you hear like uh, like famous actors, especially uh, in like Hollywood's golden era, where they're like, "Oh yeah," and all these people went to school together. Like, really, all those people? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, we all we all uh, uh, we all study with Stanislavski. Like, we're all the same <laughs> workshop. Like you, you Marlon Brando, uh, uh, like Tony Curtis, you all were in the same. Like, all, all there, all there. All yeah, there. I know. we all lived in the I'm, same house. Like. It was like like the when the women lived in the board acting like boarding houses in New York City and they're like oh yeah, oh, yeah. Rita Hayway we all live together it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> like that's cool um no but I I because I was like a, a I think like a one off workshop it was like the okay. intro oh into like uh, flirting with burlesque right right and right because that's not the act development class 
Yeah, that and then it really changed because I took Jezebel Express's uh, act development class, mm-hmm. and that was great because I really got to. I felt like like my ideas were received, and you know, real constructive criticism, and it was really like really Jezebel was a great teacher because it wasn't like oh that's a weird you know like sometimes I I mean I went to NYU I went to film school and when you had an idea it like some 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 teachers aren't great at constructive criticism (laughs) 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 like so you're just always as an artist you're always hesitant a little Mm -hmm. bit to like say your idea and because it's like, what do you mean by I'm not great? <laughs> and yeah. that's not that's not what it is. It's like, oh, maybe he needs a little working out. And so I came in to this class like, I want to dress up as Richard Nixon and take my clothes off. Was that your first act? That was the first character? Yeah. Yep, that was my first character. And I still do it. And But it's it's tweaked for the time. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. And, uh, and she was like, cool. <laughs> like, okay, let's work on this. And it was great. And I took her act development class again uh, because I really wanted to work on it. And, you know, she was great at giving, like, positive, really uh, also honest feedback. Mm. And I, that's, like, what I really wanted to he- hear because it wasn't like, oh, my ideas are, are great. <laughs> it was I want to improve. And I want to get better. And I mean, burlesque for me, you know, I have a day job, but but I also consider burlesque like uh, a job too. And I want to get better at my job. And she was really awesome with that. And she got like the whole class, our, and I the class show was excellent. You know, everybody had their thing, and everybody had their individual ideas, and and flushed them out and put them in the really well executed acts Mm -hmm. and it was even if the for the person who was like oh i'm just kind of figuring this out i don't know if i want to do burlesque it's still you know nobody nobody felt like oh well for me anyway for me i never felt like oh i'm being criticized by other classmates in some way you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like give if you go to art school and you give a you show off your work. <laughs> it's like it can be like a, oh, that was a bad experience because <laughs> critiquing, really critiquing, is an art, and I think yeah. uh, you know doing it right is very crucial. And the whole aspect of wanting to be, you know, of teaching is you want your students to succeed. And I think Jezebel was very good at that. And another person who was very good at that, who I admire so much, too, is Dr. Lucky. Mm. And she used to do these uh, camp camps, and I went, I went twice. I guess I like going to school like, as much as possible. <laughs> and, uh, and see, it's different great. when it's on your terms. It's different when it's, when it's a yeah. discipline that you are applying yourself for as opposed to being funneled all this information and then mm-hmm. being immediately tested on it. Your That's level of success is is based on on yeah. uh, so many more factors than just getting quote unquote the right quote unquote the right answer. Yeah, and like for me, my burlesque like success for burlesque for me is like going like executing an act and then going out and performing it for people and people like oh my god that was that resonated to me, or even a success for me is like, oh, I didn't really get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that that's like that's a form of success. You're like, okay, but and I perform. That's success in itself. You yeah. went up on stage and you performed for people, and you took your clothes off and you did this thing. That's pretty awesome. And a lot of people, like even we can say, like there's so many burlesque. Uh, maybe oversaturated. I don't think so. I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's like I think it's kind of awesome that so many people now feel like confident. Like, oh yeah, I want to show my body, or yeah. like I have this idea. I want to dress up as Richard Nixon and get up on stage, and people be like, what I mean, is that? <laughs> I think it's still something of a of a revolutionary sort of concept. I think. The only people who are saying that burlesque is oversaturated are other burlesque performers. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and a lot of that is because, uh, and I say this as a producer who at least once a week, I mean, this, this past month I've 
I will have produced four individual shows. Yeah, and that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, but it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of it's a lot of networking and meeting people, and it's a lot of putting shows on. Honestly, for a lot of other burlesque performers, right? Because right. The, the people who care most about burlesque are the people who do it. Right. And it's such a specific art form because while, yes, I'm sure photographers go to art galleries and look at other people's work, and I'm sure painters keep up on the scene to see what else is going on, and actors go, try to go to as many shows as possible to support their friends, we are one of those situations where we go to our, our, go to our own people's stuff a yep. lot of the time. And yep. it's really difficult uh, sometimes keeping track of who's doing what or where or what's the theme or the or the style. And yeah. one of the things that I have to say is absolutely accurate of your producing, uh, which we can get into in a moment where you how you started that, is that yours is, I believe, always centered around politics, either past, present or or history, um, uh, you know, past or history. That That's. A great yep. way of putting it. Um, <laughs> um, was when was the first time that you produced your own show, and was that always the case? That that was last year. I had so it starts out with me having this idea for like like three years, <laughs> and then eventually it like comes to fruition. That's like how I always work. Uh, it's whether it's like jumping off the cliff. Okay, I just need to do this. And last year. Well, first off, the first show I produced was in – it was the election with Obama and McCain. And, uh, and I did my first election uh, extravaganza, and, uh, and that was the first show that I produced. And I was really in a tough spot that, that year because I was unemployed. Um, you know, I was like, how am I going to, like, get people – you know, you want other people other, – performers to come to the show, but you also want people off the street to come see the show, yeah. too, as well. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to do have to do this, and this is crazy. Uh, but I really felt that the show was warrant, like it needed to happen. But um, it wasn't called, I believe, i got to remember my own show. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't called T.Z. Roosevelt's Guide to Titsuri at the time. It was just like T.Z. Roosevelt's Election Extravaganza. Okay. And then after that, uh, I didn't produce for a very long time because it was exhausting. <laughs> yeah, you got through all of the Obama years, and then <laughs> yeah, I got through all the Obama years, and then and then I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we all went. And then we all went to hell. So you suddenly you started. Oh, I felt like this. <laughs> and then i i had the I had an idea for a podcast I wanted to do for. For quite a while, uh -huh. it was like uh, T.Z. Roosevelt's Guide to Titsuri, where like a, a person, uh, improviser friend, would come in and, and improv, uh, you know, as a famous person, and the, then I would interview them. And uh, you know, it's at another time in my life, I was unemployed. You know, it's a lot of this stuff. You know, it costs money, right? Yeah. So it costs money to get all this stuff, and I just didn't have the mental capacity, the financials. I knew the talent. Well, talent was there for me, and they would help, but it really, it really was like, okay, I don't know if I can do this, and also I don't know if I can live in New York anymore, because New York is, you know, I did that for almost, you know, around 10 years, I tried the New York thing, and so I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore financially, I need to be able to live, and then I moved back upstate mm -hmm. to Albany, and then things changed. I got like a full-time job and I started really doing a little bit more. There was a burlesque scene up here. I didn't know that at the time. I was like, what? <laughs> what is, all right. Uh, because we, you know, I was so insular in the New York scene that you kind of just like forget what's going on mm -hmm. outside. And, uh, and then I got the job uh, where I work now and I was making money and I was making money where I could put things into a savings account, like burlesque, uh, have a burlesque savings account, which I never had before. And and I had all the things you don't want to think about, like health insurance. How am I going to go to the dentist? Mm. And a lot of that was, you know, for me when living in New York, it was preventing me from wanting 
what I really wanted to do. Cheesy Roosevelt's Guide to Tisserie was always something that I had in mind, whether it was podcast or what. But after the election, the, he shall not be named. No, it's uh, so funny. We, we've act, I talk about the, the election all the time on this podcast, and none of us okay. actually have to specify which one. We, <laughs> <laughs> we just say, the election. I, the imagine, election. It's, I imagine it's like how people of a certain era say, the war. So like that's right, just yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. We know exactly which one you mean. Yeah. No, it's like it's not talking about like elections. The election of Benjamin Harrison. You know. It's like, well, like, yeah. Exactly I mean, what we're to. <laughs> like, I was talking about that one, but now I'm a, I feel the. Oh, now I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah, and then uh, it was that was it, and I'm like, okay, I I really got to jump the gun and do this, and it was also a thing like I a lot of people were starting. I mean, I. I Burlesque has always been political, and, and people before have been doing political and historical acts and things like that. But then I saw mm-hmm. like a lot of people were doing more of it, mm-hmm. and I go, well, okay, there's there might be a, like a, a niche market for this, and I might not be struggling to find pe- find people for acts, mm. and I have it, <laughs> like which is great. And uh, but the election really was kind of like this is the time to do this. Uh, my life was together <laughs> at that time to do it. America was failing, but you were doing great. I was great. <laughs> yeah, the thing that ha- what happened was as soon as he got – because I – at the time – like because I'm so niche and – I was also breaking out at the time of doing, like, more nerd, nerd-less stuff, although I consider what I do very much nerd-less. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, fandom. I was doing more, like – I was doing more different kinds of acts, like, uh, you know, very just branching out because I'm like, well, okay, I need, I would like to submit to this festival or, like, get booked for this show if I have this act, and I still do that now, but as soon as he got, <laughs> as soon as he got elected, uh, my <laughs> bookings, like, increased, and I, <laughs> I hate to be like, I'm like, oh, oh that's, it's good and it sucks at the same time. Yeah. And it, it's such also a very privileged thing to say, be like, oh, I'm benefiting from this. And, but for me also, it was like, let's, I don't want to just, you know, showcase what I'm doing. There are many other people who have viewpoints um, and are strong performers or have concepts that they want to do, but they haven't been able to do it yet. And like, I also love experimentation. Like, you could, you could give me an idea for an act, and I'm like, okay, yeah, do, do it. <laughs> like, I think this is, like, a great. Um, like, uh, 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 Kia La Sangria uh, gave me an idea to go, go, and kin as she wanted to go, go, and kin as Amorosa. And I'm like, yeah, do it for the next show. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, totally. <laughs> like, uh, you know, you come up with a great idea, and I'm like, yes, go with it. And I think a lot of people were like, 
I want to really, really explore this. We're in horrible times right now, mm. and where everybody is feeling scared, I mean, legitimately scared, mm-hmm. uh, and some people more so, uh, especially for marginalized people, mm. and they need a room, like, people need a room to, like, really work that out. And I was going, okay, yeah, let me, let's do this, let's do it, let's do this crazy thing. And and then I've just continued doing it, and I don't do it that, like, it's like a twice a year thing, because I don't live in the city. And I, it, it's just like, like, art, what we're doing now is so important. Like, our burlesque is so important now, and I don't, you know, I, I want people to realize how it, like, even if it's like a small show in like a, you know, a basement, you know, it's still so important that we're performing mm-hmm. because everything, even, even if you're like, for instance, dressing up as Ron Swanson, <laughs> like, that's, you know, it's still political. Like our bodies right now are political. Us just, you know, women walking around political, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you being a female producer is, is political. Being a producer is political. And yes. producing shows that kind of, that lampoon the president is, yeah. you know, used to be something where it was like, ha like this is uh, Nixon, right? Yeah, you know, and you could feel like you could do that. And yeah. now it's at a now point Now we're all where, waiting for someone to break in and, and like, arrest us. Like, it's a yeah, very... Exactly scary experience sometimes yeah it is it's, it is and you know it, it, and it i think so, like a you know i definitely took that for granted like i took that right for granted completely and when now the president quote unquote is going mm. on tv and talking about military parades and how the you know press shouldn't you know we should tell the press what to say and telling marginalized people what to do and throwing children into detention centers. It's mm-hmm. like, for me, you know, hist- history has always, history has always been ugly. It's mm. always ugly. And, uh, like, Andrew Jackson, ugly, ugly history. Yeah. There. You know, it's always, American history is not pretty. And anybody who says that, oh, those, those are the good old days. <laughs> Yeah, good old days for who exactly? Like, yeah, no. Really? For who are you talking about? Well, how do you how do you reconcile um, what is ostensibly considered a celebration of history when it is a, a painful history for so many people, including including uh, folk that you are a part of because you are a woman, and yeah. you, um, I I may be speaking out of turn here, but you also are, identify as a queer woman, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So there is. There is all of these factors. I mean, throw in like the plight of the American Indians, and throw in the plight yep. of of the civil rights movement that you know is yep. ongoing, and and police brutality, and all of these things. How do we make history fun and relevant, but not make light of atrocities? And that is a question that I grappled with before I produced the first show, mm. like the first history show, because for me, I, 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 love, I love history, yay, but for other people, it's, 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 upset, it's upsetting. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, for me, there are certain aspects, of, there are all aspects of history that are upsetting, mm-hmm. and I think for people to get up on stage and explore that is monumental. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, my favorite act of, uh, of one of the history shows was uh, one of my favorite acts was Essence Revealed. And it's so powerful, her Black Lives Matter act. And I'm like, and people, I, you know, people were crying in yeah. her act. And, like, that's what is, for me, important, you know, to, to have, you know, for people to have these kind of emotions and to sit there and go, wow, I really, I need to think about this more. Uh, you know, it can be a fun, uh, you know, it's like, uh, to, I feel like things would, if, no, I don't, you know, it's hard to say because 
I probably would have been, my mindset probably would have been different if, let's say, you know, there was a different president. I'd be like, this fun history show. It's kind of like drunk history. Yay. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, uh, but now it's still, it's like these voices need to be heard. Yeah. And these acts need to be done. And, you know, we need to see the ugly side of history or the ugly side of politics or how, um, uh, you know, POC and, and queer people are affected. Yeah. Um, you know, a Modesty Rose, another performer, does a really great uh, HIV act, and that's moving as well. You know, like, I hope that people still, you know, I think people can get pretty complacent, especially, like, I feel like Obama, like, especially white people were like, yeah, liberal white people were like, yeah, life's great, right? Uh, and then <laughs> now, like, they're affected by what's happening and today, but for, like, you know, a person like a, uh, you know, a Modesty Act is so important to her, Essence Act is so important to her and these acts you know i feel i feel like people need to to see this stuff see the ugly side of you know america and i think that's really what when i when i started doing it it's like yeah you know have a great time uh yeah the show and it's burlesque but i want people come out of there like thinking and I had a friend who saw one of the Tissue shows going, you know, I just thought I was going to a burlesque show. Hmm. I didn't think I was gonna go I didn't think I was gonna cry, laugh, uh, think <laughs> like, <laughs> like because there's that like still that connotation that like burlesque is, you know, just for eyes, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's sort of frivolous, yeah. And yeah. and then uh, I had you know way for one to first, first history show I had like I believe the first one Waymas did a beautiful Aztec um, act we had Essence Revealed's act uh, you know it was it was a combination of like I wanted to have people to ex- see the exploration of American history and I remember that that show I had like it was linear like time wise. Yeah, it, it a, went backwards to forwards, right? It actually went. It ended with Essence's Act, didn't it? Yep, it did. Yeah, yeah. And that's and, a hard uh, that that's a hard uh, pill to swallow because that actually isn't a history act. It's a it's a present day act. Yep. Mm-hmm. But that I mean, is seen through historical context. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It shows us yeah, how far and, we've not quite come. Exactly, and and I think that's. You know, that's a good point. Like, what you brought up is like, yeah, we haven't really come that far. In fact, we are getting worse. And, mm. and it's, and you know, we got to question these, you know, how, you know, I don't want to say it, but how long can you, like, get up on stage and start and do what we do without someone coming in and telling us that we can't do it? Mm. Or, and, you know, it's not. Well, that. we're already experiencing a lot of a lot of blowback in our in our uh, means of advertising our shows. I mean, I know yep. you just experienced this with Facebook this past week, and any producer who has ever tried to promote a show via Facebook or Instagram um, or or these these corporate you know means uh, are finding difficulty because our business is very naked and has yep. language that most of these companies don't want to deal with, let alone mm-hmm. the visuals. So uh, do you want to say what, what happened this week for yeah. our, our audience? <laughs> yeah, so I tried to, I, I, know, I tried to boost my um, next history, history show, mm. uh, but because I had the word fuck really – didn't really have the word fuck in it. It was like an asterisk. And then uh, Trump, uh, they considered that uh, uh, 
of national politics and national of national importance. Is it to say it was obscene? Because I have gotten, I've been yeah. told something was obscene before because I've won a title with the word fuck in it. Yeah. So I've been told, oh, I can't use that. I can't boost a post with that word in it. But to no, be told wasn't... that the words fuck Trump are inherently political yep. is a and... fascinating concept. Right. Right, and that it, for me was, and then and then you add the word national importance, and, and national I importance. think, oh, uh, North Korea, <laughs> like I yeah. hear nationalism, national. It's not like said like, oh, the that Washington, you know, we're gonna go to Washington Nationals game or something like that. Yeah. It's like, oh, national importance. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> like. Mussolini, like mm-hmm. Hitler, like I, I was so, I was maybe it, you know, and it, it made me laugh, uh, yeah. and then it made me sad, <laughs> like really, like. Oh. Well, it's so frustrating because again, these are the platforms that, like, I can't open face. I mean, I'm on Facebook um, most of my life, frankly, at this yeah. point. <laughs> um, and I used to say I was on a computer like 14, 15 hours a day, and I think that's minimal now uh, because I'm on my phone. I've, I mean, I've been talking to you on the phone. I have checked my cell phone. We've been talking for just about 45 minutes. I have probably picked up my phone just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Six uh-huh. times. Just six yeah. times. And I'm engaged and we're talking and I'm able to fully pay attention. But I, that's, just the word we, that's just where I live right now. And Facebook will tell us to boost our posts about twice a day. Right. And the fact and that it won't even let us give them money right. is mind-boggling. Right. Utterly, you, utterly mind-boggling. Oh, you won't take my money, but you're going to show me in my feed, hey, Teasy, your, po- your post hasn't been boosted yet. I go, I know. yeah, because you won't let me boost it. <laughs> I know. I know. I've accidentally clicked on that post thinking it was just you know, the, the, uh, the post that I made and it takes me there and I'm like, Oh great. Now I'm going to see this remarketed to me for the next week, oh. reminding me to continue doing that. I'm like, <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It was, and I clicked on the, the, like how, find out how you can boost your post of national importance. And it was <laughs> oh just, yeah. Does it give you the ability to, to appeal it? Um, it involves my ID, my I believe my social security number, all this Holy stuff. Holy shit, really? Yeah. Let, let me, yeah. It was that uh, is kind of terrifying. Of right here, but to like, it boost was, a uh, post. Yeah. Because and to verify <laughs> you as worthy of talking about national politics. <laughs> to make it, to, to actually give you credentials to qualify you to say exactly. those words. Like... I'm like, Facebook, you invented the political, like the online political argument, right? You Mm. and Twitter, uh, you know, like, and now you're trying to, in some fashion, save face and prevent people from, like, like, uh, organi- like you, I, it applies to organizing a, um, let's say like a a pro-choice rally, things like Mm. that, uh, there were, I remember looking at the words like uh, pro-choice, uh, uh, Democrat, Republican, any of, the, any of those like key words that the algorithm will pick up, you mm-hmm. won't be able to to boost your post. Even if you're just like pro-choice, like a comedy for Planned Parenthood, you know, to boost that, you <laughs> it's a considered a, a national mm-hmm. Well, we have a number of we have a number of colleagues, uh, people of color specifically, who get banned on Facebook temporarily because they use the expression white people or right. or something like that. This is this is an actual thing that's happening. Yep. Uh for anybody who who has not heard this, we have uh we we are not actually allowed to use the expression fuck white people um when referring to or or not even just that specific. I mean, it can actually be far more uh generalized and and what that basically ends up meaning is that the <laughs> the 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 safest group in the United States you cannot attack you can't punch up it's a difficult yep. it's a difficult uh notion um and that also means that any variation of it is in question because what what if you mean that what if what you're saying can be interpreted as as fuck white people because right. frankly white people where we are fucking up 
Yes. And it's <laughs> it's really it should not be a revelation to suggest that because right. at, at 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 the core of America's fuck ups are in fact white people are in fact white people. <laughs> like, yeah, there's there's no question about that, and yeah. it is just I don't. I mean, I've thought many times how I need to get off of Facebook, but for us, it's kind of how we promote our show. It's shows. how we communicate. It's how we we get castings. Gigs. We tag each other in things. It's, it's it's also a way to. It's so it's a really upsetting because um, Facebook is also how we prove to ourselves that we exist. Right. Because it's a way of saying, "Look, I took this photo of me. Other people can see it. I mm-hmm. exist." I exist anywhere, and and it it means that what we're doing isn't confound confound confined confined to this. Bu- yeah, sorry, I was like confounded. Uh, isn't confined to a forty person bar, and it it just makes us feel like we're being seen or being heard. Um, and right. they knew what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. It's a it's a it's a brilliant, terrifying invention that. Is uh, I mean, it, it, is now it, changing it, the rules? You well, yeah, they're changing the rules and realize they created this monster. Like yeah. it started out just for college students. Yeah, you know, you had to have like a college. I remember you had to when Facebook started, you had to have a college uh, email address, and then yes. I guess people were complaining and they opened it up to everybody. And well, once they, MySpace, yeah, once MySpace, yeah, right, yeah. And then it, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, how can be a friend, you know, MySpace turned into like I'm friending a traffic cone, right? <laughs> like it was like a real thing. I'm I know my like, MySpace went though with the way of LiveJournal, where oh, yeah. it, well, with with way more Mac, with way more modification capability, yeah. because LiveJournal it didn't have to be a real person, and now no. my LiveJournal is owned by the Russians, which is also an interesting development. <laughs> Like how it's like it's so weird how things have come out, right? So it, it is. It, it for me, it, it, it started out as this thing for students to connect. Yay, we're all together. And then it is, as you said, this monolith of crazy, yeah. where I don't want to know my aunt's like, like uh, uh, crazy political opinions. That the I'm like, I wanted to know where is that? Like Aunt Gladys, my sweet Aunt Gladys, who now thinks. That the world is flat. <laughs> like like oh, I, oh, I did not know that about her. Uh, okay, but in hindsight too, it's like, oh, you, Uncle Joe, you know, you're a racist. Okay, yeah. I will call you out on everything that you were saying on Facebook and in person because. You, you know, you just don't get you, you say stuff on the internet now, and it's forever, yeah. right? They, people think that oh, if I delete it, it's gone. No, it's it's not. Like it's it's not gone. <laughs> like uh, you you say all these crazy things, and then at, at a, a family reunion, and you're all like nice and yay, I'm I'm not this crazy racist, but now I know that you are, and that's yeah. a good thing in a way because you're like oh. Okay, this this is someone I really don't want. This is someone I need to educate. Well, educate, and then they just ignore everything I say. Okay, well, I don't need to talk to you anymore. Yeah, I mean, so, there's there is certainly a, an element of how much time do we really need to spend trying to educate people who are just not going to, or not even just educate, but also like because they're, it's all under the auspices of debate, right? Like, oh, right. you're now you're freaking out, and that you can't even have a have a discussion um like well right. you don't really want a discussion you want to right. tell me and that it, i'm it, a hypocrite and <laughs> <laughs> and it it really it's it's it also goes like how many to- how many like like hours of my day yeah. do i want to spend on this thing yeah. when i'm I mean, already on here yeah. trying to promote my show that i can't promote and then yeah. also getting in Facebook arguments with people <laughs> like that I don't know on a New York Times article. <laughs> like, what? I like, know. you know, I, it's just, I don't, it's just a strange thing to experience and to think like, oh, you know, I was trying to the other day think about like what, you know, 
when cell like when people first started having cell phones, mm-hmm. and I remember sending my first like angry text like to somebody I was like dating at the time, uh-huh. and uh you know and now I think about like oh you know because for me it was like I didn't want that confrontation so I'm just gonna text them, and now all we do is text. I think it was yeah. the first time I've talked on the house phone with somebody. <laughs> like, do you remember, like, flame war emails when we used to keep things private in our arguments? Yeah. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. We no. actually tag the person now, which, I mean, good or bad. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people need to be tagged, and sometimes people need to, um, I don't want to say publicly shamed, but they need to be aware that you can respond yeah. to things and you're not in a vacuum. Just jumping back uh, and, and actually in comment to someone who frequently uh, posts things on the Internet without much concern for the world around them. Um, mm-hmm. Our president, um, you play uh, on stage. Uh, you do a variation on, on Donald Trump in your burlesque. And I'm curious, when you are portraying someone that I'm going to go out on a limb and say you don't have a great affinity for. Yeah. Um, how do you get in the mindset of of that and say, I'm playing this awful creature um, and still enjoy yourself? Yeah, I'd still I'd be okay. Yeah, I'd be like, a, uh, you know, it's also well, hard. I can understand. I can understand how the audience can enjoy it because we yeah. we we live in we live in a uh, we've had Saturday Night Live for you know like ever and we've yeah. had satire forever although we depend far too much on it as a, a to excuse bad jokes um, yeah. but the the wear and tear on the person doing it can be I would imagine quite strenuous. You know, at first it. it it was, but I have so much hatred for him that it's kind of like almost cathartic because I can be, you know, it's, it'll, you know, at first it was hard trying to portray somebody who is already a buffoon, mm-hmm. like already this caricature of themselves. Uh, but, and to do it and silently is, I would imagine, extraordinarily difficult because most yeah. of most of what makes him ridiculous is him speaking or him yep. his language, right? His manner, everything about him is, is just like buffoonery. And at first, it was very difficult because uh, you know you know when you he's you know in our circles he's very viscerally hated, right? So it's always kind of like, oh, I'm going to do this thing, are people going to gonna be you know, feel awful after it and am I gonna feel awful and I just went in with the mindset for like a, a comedy from a comedy background that this is very cathartic mm-hmm. uh, for me and to get to portray him as this you know grotesque, like grotesque like it, 
eating a hamburger, pulling it out of pants, uh, nipple, like a uh, uh, toupee pasties. Also, that uh, a fat queer woman is portraying him on stage, which I mm-hmm. feel like he would absolutely hate. <laughs> True. Well, how do you like? How do you feel about the? Uh, I mean, it's a leading question because I have a, an assessment on how you yeah. feel about it. But how do you feel about the cheap joke of his body type being so prevalent in comments about him? I mean, I know that he sort of opens the door because of his comments on on the appearance of so many women and people in general. But it's a quick and easy cheap joke. Right, it's, it's something that I've, especially for, for improv, and, and for me, it's always like, go to the top of your intelligence. And so for me, it's not like, oh, I'm, like, he's like this oaf. It's going, for me, I'm thinking, what is he doing in his daily life? How does he walk? How does he do that? How, how does he think? Uh, also, I've grappled with, like, the the you know seeing my friend my comedy friends make things about make jokes about uh, his his body weight how he looks uh, I've grappled with that cause, mm. like if it were the other way around about like Hillary Clinton I'm sure I'd be like you can't say that you know what I mean like it's yeah. double double standard and I have no real answer for that because you know he'll go well right now he's the leader of the free world so he can he's take the leader it. of the free world right yeah. like and you have the leader of the free world saying that a porn, like porn star Stormy Daniels, you know, who tried to sue him and, or like, and, you know, her lawsuit wasn't really acknowledged, right? So. Yeah, one, one charge was dismissed. Not yeah. all of it. Just all, one. Right. But he made it and seem it, like the whole thing was over. Exactly, right? So that's how our news cycle works. And like, you know, but he's going on on Twitter and on you know TV and he's calling her a horse face. Yeah, a horse face. I'm like, dude, you you paid this woman to have sex with you. <laughs> like, and you're going on it and you're calling her a horse face. Like, you obviously you, you you're just using this as her looks. As, and she's a beautiful woman. And you're using her yeah. looks as like a retaliation, and it's it's hard. It's really hard because he is like you know. He's more so, you know, I think like his manner, his mannerisms comes from his personality. And I feel like making fun of his personality is a lot easier uh, to, is, let's say, how do I say this, is, is, enough, is good enough for me. Mm. Because personality is awful. <laughs> like, he is generally, he's just an awful person, an awful yeah. person, you know, if he was like really like a genuine nice person and like cared about society and wanted to do great things and was like had this progressive mindset, you know, like obviously everything would be so different. But his personality, he who he is, is Stop. awful and deserves to be made fun of. <laughs> yeah. like, and I try to like bring that, you know, like eating a hamburger, yeah, it's like, it, it, but that's like, like a trait he has and has admitted to himself that he loves McDonald's. Mm-hmm. So it's like taking his trait, taking his personality and like, you know, it, it, it just putting that on stage. That's, also, I, that's I, a symbol of, that's a symbol of, of America as well. Yeah. Is yeah, the hamburger. Right? Right. It is. And I, McDonald's I mean, is, is sort of a equival, equ- equivalent to sort of like yes. a concept of of our decadent, cheap yes. living. Yes, exactly. And the suppose the richest man in America, you know, it's like enjoys this decadent, cheap like living, yeah. right? And uh, and you know, it's. It's a, I think coming up with a lot of like acts like this, especially for anybody who's going to do Donald Trump, it's not like, oh yeah, this guy is ugly. Like okay, <laughs> like right, yes, all right. Uh, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna make fun of his weight. Like uh, eh. what? Take really look at him. <laughs> was said with a serious, serious, <laughs> and and uh, all aspects of him and incorporate. All of that. I mean, you really know that the, the makeup job is like so simple, right? <laughs> like you really don't have to do much. It's he's he's like, you know, uh, tan and obviously wears the the tanning goggles. Uh, but that's just one aspect of the caricature. It is really mostly for me 
coming through. Like for me, it's like Nixon because it it starts out as Richard Nixon and then mm. it turns into Donald Trump, and I think those two are very similar, very similar in paranoia, very mm. similar in stubbornness, and you know, it it was such a real when people started connecting him to Nixon, I'm like, yeah. That's right, exactly. Maybe Nixon was a little smarter in his tactical, like, you know, how he operated, but the guy was extremely paranoid and recorded every converse, almost every conversation he had. Um, yeah. tr- po- Politics-wise, yeah, a little bit, you know. And I was like, oh, yeah, that connection is there. So it came more from trying to make this connection and then having like crook written on my butt because it was, he's, you know, both of them, if Trump more, both of them, not, not more so, but both of them are yeah. crooks and Trump especially is one. And I do like, as I said before, I just do love, I love the fact that like, like more women now are like portraying Trump like more port PSC like doing like like Trump acts because I think he would absolutely hate it mm. and you know probably make some comments about our body <laughs> if he ever saw it very likely and, yeah but I mean it's, it's so hard right it's so hard but, but Michelle Obama's right you know they they go low we go high I mean it's really hard sometimes <laughs> not to go low like really really hard but that woman has so much class so much class and it, you kind of gotta like be like yeah she's she's right and i think like play if you're going to do trump play at the the top of your intelligence with trump and not just that's, be that's, like oh. that's burlesque burlesque while it can take a cheap shot there is a, a level of oh, yeah. everyone let's let's just sort of treat this as sort of faux sophistication there's, exactly. I mean, there's, there's a time and a place, of course, it, for for buffoonery in in yep. burlesque, but there's there's a certain wit that is also inherent in it, right? So, and in getting that wit in like like two to five minutes, you know, <laughs> like, you know, getting your point across in in, in two to five minutes, yeah, uh, for for it and getting being political and and making sure that the audience, not you know, I, sometimes like. I was like making sure the audience understands. Like sometimes the audience will never get it. But you, you ever know, ever had anybody walk out? Uh, let's. I'm trying to. I, or or I, complain. Uh, I've never had. I feel like the parks. Like I've always had the shows at the park side, so I feel like the park side is like. Uh, you know, the audience there is going to be like. They kind of know what they're getting into. Kind of like know what yeah. they're getting into. Um, Especially with a show like called "Fuck Trump," because that's sort yeah, of on the tin. Like you're coming to you, you know, you wear your MAGA hat surprised. and like in the front row. Yeah. I don't think this. But, but like a that, nice, well-meaning couple saying, "Oh, it's like a guide to history, history but it'll right? be fun." Yeah. And then you realize that a lot of people don't want to have a mirror held up to themselves yeah. or a mirror held up to their ancestors. So. Exactly. <laughs> right, and that's uh, and like I, I think. <laughs> like at the Empire Burlesque Festival, uh, I had uh, my partner's videotape. Videotape, listen to me. Uh, <laughs> Back on your blockbuster kick. <laughs> I know, my blockbuster. Uh, I got my RCA camera, uh, and then he uh, uh, recorded it. And uh, even that's probably old term terminology now. Anyway, he. Uh, <laughs> but there was this, there's this woman like. All the way in the back, like, <laughs> just, like, sitting there with their arms folded. <laughs> just, like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Like, I was just giving you, like, major stink face the whole time? Stink face the uh, whole entire time. What was the act? I, was it your, your Theodore Roosevelt act? It, no, it was, Trump act? Act. it was the Trump it was, Act. It was the Trump yeah. Act. And it, I was, like, laughing so hard because I'm kind of like, what... <laughs> You know, what did you? Uh, I don't know. But are there, again, it's naive of me to think that. Like, what? What were you thinking? But <laughs> no, like, there, there, are, there are absolutely conservative burlesque fans, and there are absolutely conservative burlesque performers. 
Uh, right. There, there are several. Yeah. Not everyone knows necessarily because they're because again, it's just like any other medium. There's going to be conservative painters, going to be conservative sculptors, right. there's going to be conservative actors. Um, right. It's, right. It's, and, you know, it my... still feels weird. It still feels weird. I get it. <laughs> Yeah, because it, it feels mean, like you know, such a liberal concept, but it doesn't have like to be. It's for me, for me to even say like, "Oh, yeah, we're all like a mindset." No, that's not how life is, and that's not how society is. Yeah, yeah. And it's still it's just very like <laughs> this woman, just like really mad and folding her arms, like I do not approve of what's happening <laughs> on this stage. But at least and, it was it was saved for posterity. Uh, yeah. And, and <laughs> if you could somehow like, like make, make that into a testimonial. <laughs> I know, like make like folds are. It's 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 so funny because my partner said like. Oh, um, maybe she's just really angry at seeing Trump. <laughs> like maybe that's what it was. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't know. She didn't know you were you were taking the piss out of him. She thought you yeah. were glorifying <laughs> like, him, like, which I can uh, understand. Yeah. <laughs> it is I such a Trump fawning portrait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, way to put like a kind of positive spin on it, but like, <laughs> which was it was. It, but that's like good. It's actually you know it keeps me in check. Because, you know, I can be very in this insulated world of, you know, progressive, liberal, liberal, blast performers. But, mm. um, you know, I'm already getting, you know, I post the the show flyer on my Instagram and I have all these, like, Trump hashtags. And I get very threatening, you know, messages in my uh, inbox. Mm. And you're kind of going, oh, Right. I'm just, this isn't going to like a select group of people. This is, this is going into the universe of the internet where people will say anything and everything yeah. <laughs> like to you. And it can be, it's just like, it's a good, it's a good reality check, uh, especially like for a white person, it's a good reality check. Like, oh yeah, this, this is not how the world, this is how people are. <laughs> like people are can be inherently awful, and that's been shown throughout history. Whether or not, like uh, you know, whether or not it's Instagram or or a, a strongly worded letter to the New York Times, like yeah. like it, it really. Uh, and you know, it's like it sucks. It sucks that you think you think like, yeah, I'm super, I'm super liberal, I'm super progressive, and then then you're like, oh wait, maybe actually, I my life was so insular, and I keep saying that because it's it's just such a it's such a sh- like true thing for mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, who were really never affected through mm-hmm. what history like through a lot of the events through history. Uh, you know, like you, you think, oh, shit, this is this is like this has always been real. And now I'm experiencing it, experiencing it, mm-hmm. and but people have experienced it more so. Does that make? I'm not making any sense. But, no, it makes a lot of sense. There's okay. there's a certain. I mean, again, it, it comes down to a lot of privilege, and it comes down to yeah. a lot of uh, experiences that aren't that. As particularly white Americans and particularly yeah. white male Americans and white straight male Americans. And to that end, also a lot of, um, uh, second wave feminists and a lot of, a lot of, uh, trans exclusionary feminists or, 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 yeah. or folks who don't support sex workers or people who thought that they were cool with that black guy that they were friends with, but then suddenly they have a problem with, with, uh, with race being brought up all the time and like, like, Oh, but why does this always have to be an issue? I'm like, cause it applies guys. Cause it, it, yeah, it, it's it applies. part of it. And, and it, it's, it's a, going to know, always apply for your lifetime. Right. It, it will always absolutely. That's you summed it up. Awesomely, Victor. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it, it will always apply to your lifetime. And, you know, for me, it was very much a, a learning experience. Like, you think, oh, I'm so woke, and then you realize, wait, no, I, I really haven't been. I've had these, you know, these viewpoints, and and I got to call myself out on it. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's you got to learn from it, and and I just it's it's frustrating when you when you continuously see people like 
what, what we talked about before, like you, you know, people not learning from it and just not getting it. And then you got to step back and be like, is my time and energy worth this? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Worth it? Yeah, because sometimes me, it can feel really hopeless. It can feel really hopeless. Really, and say, can, like, well, what are we even What are we even doing? Because it, it doesn't right. necessarily feel like it's going to make a difference. And to that end, we could just as easily say, well, if everything is going to hell anyway, then let's just do it until the place burns down. Right. Like, if, if, if that is how it's going to be. Because one of two things might happen. Either it's going to be successful and will help inhabit change, or... It's all going to burn to hell anyway. Yeah. Right. And either way, and we I, could still be I, dancing. Yeah, right. And I just think, like, for me, I will never, as especially as a white person, I, you know, I will never stop, like, trying to educate other white people, even if they're not getting it. I, it can be, you know, frustrating, <laughs> but I just, I, I always think that, like, there's a little bit of glimmer, like, in there, a little bit of, you know, like, maybe twinkle in the eye of realization. Uh, and I and I think that's, for me, why continuously putting on, like, the, the titsery shows mm-hmm. is, is, for me, so important because mm-hmm. I, I get people, like, audience members see all this different aspect of, whether it's history or whether it's politics, they're, like you said before, like thrown into this uh, uh, room and made to think about what's going on in the world. And that for me is so, it's so important and it's so important for people to have like a voice to do that too as well, to get up on stage mm-hmm. and, and have like their art form uh, uh, displayed and their and their history displayed and their uh, you know what they want to say and having people sit there and watch it and it's and now for me it's it's so important that people get to to experience that and even if it's for other burlesque performers too you know we <laughs> like. I, I feel I <laughs> we're still out there. We still vote. We still do stuff. Yep. And we still have, yeah. We we still have things that we need to also be exposed to. We also right. have. We also need to see things too because we also yep. have inherent prejudices. Or we also have things that we don't consider, um, and that we just need reinforcement on too. Because again, sometimes it can be very lonely to see someone on stage, even if we fully agree with them. Mm-hmm. That can be very comforting. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It, it can be, and and I think the the you know going to places like uh, going to like conventions like a Burley Con, you know, and then seeing that there's there's burlesque and like near, up near Dead Horse or <laughs> burlesque in the, the most remote part of the world, and I'm going, yeah, give give me all of that, give me all of that because I want to experience what what you're experiencing what your voice is and and I hope like eventually my goal is to like take the titsery show on the road Mm -hmm. eventually at some point uh and I would love to go to places where me you know it might not be as well received (laughs) but at least like I would I would love to get the these voices out there in these in these places and then have other like these towns experience this yeah. uh you know it may take some time after everything has calmed down a little bit if never if it might never ever come down uh but you know it's it i don't know man it's like it's so important it's just like so important right now to do for us to continue doing what we're doing and not stopping what we're doing, whether, you know, Facebook can't stop me from putting on the show, even if it's for, like, five people. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, it's it, I, it's more, it's more like I was trying to plan out, like, my titsery shows for 2019, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I want to do this and this and this and this and this, and then I'm going, oh, I only have so much time, but, you know, I'm going to try as I might can, can get it out because, for the the fuck Trump show, 
I got so many submissions. There's so many people out there that want to, like, have this voice and want to do these acts. And I'm like, i got to, like, get these people on stage and I only have an hour. Yeah. So it, it was, it's, great. it's great. It's great to see people wanting to, like, explore history and the, the political side of it. Well, thank you for for sitting down and 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 chatting with me. Um, I agree. I think that we are at a we've been at a cross, crossroads for such a long time that this crossroad seems to be one hell of a long intersection. But um, I appreciate what you do, and I'm glad that you yep. are there to help facilitate other voices. I remember we did. It. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we. I remember we did a show in, and I don't want to. I'm not like patting. I'm not. I'm not uh, trying to be uh, pat you on the back because it is. It's the fact of of reality, and I'm glad that you were on the on the right side of this. Um, but we were at a show that you were producing, and there were four women of color and uh, four black women specifically, and they all were like, "Wow, this never happens." Um, and I think that's important to realize that that is an anomaly in our yeah. industry, and that even we as producers need to. Uh, fix that we need to we need to address that and say why is that such an anomaly because we wouldn't sneeze at a show that had six all-white performers because we wouldn't think anything different if we were backstage and everyone else was white and i think that that's important to pay attention to um it's like how it's you know it's i've been watching a lot of uh um like 90s television shows like cheers uh well 80s cheers wings you know, <laughs> Frasier, mm-hmm. and now I, you know, I'm finding myself going, oh, I would have never back in a day, like, oh, look, you know, look at all these white people. Why isn't there one person of color in this show? And and now when I go see shows, it, I think about, like, di- diversity and how, like, who has the most to say? People of color, queer people have the most to say about history. Mm-hmm. And it's important to get them on stage. <laughs> like, yep. it's so, it's just so important. And, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't pat myself on the, the back for that because it's, it's something that we as producers should be doing anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate yeah. it. And, uh, here is, here is hoping to a time when, uh, history gets a little less scary. So that mm-hmm. the, that, yep. that would require the future to get a little less scary. And while I'm glad that you are at uh, the forefront of, of facilitating that that retelling and that reminding of what we've been through, uh, I uh, am glad to also stare blindly ahead into the sun <laughs> and see In how we're going. Right? <laughs> yeah. like, it's somewhere. It's, it's a, solace is somewhere. It's ta- around here. <laughs> like, the end is near. Um, Cool. Uh, this has been We Burlesque. I'm Victor Devon. I've been talking to TZ Roosevelt. And uh, have a good night. And uh, God bless America. God bless America. Commander Shepard, and this is... Wait, you can't be Commander Shepard. I'm Commander Shepard. Okay, we're both Commander Shepard, and we're here to tell you about our favorite podcast on the Citadel. Do you like narrative video games with deeply developed characters? What about exploring complicated moral quandaries, like romancing aliens? Then you should be listening to Reignite, a show where two friends take a 10-year-old video game way too seriously. And sometimes not seriously enough. I'm Commander Shepard. And I'm Commander Shepard. We should go. Hi, this is Victor Devon. Thank you so much for listening to Season 2 of We Burlesque, the podcast. A uh, special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Uh, that is Rob, Stormageddon, Kelly, Joseph, and Michelle. If you would like to support us via Patreon, you can go to the patreon.com forward slash We Burlesque. It is also in the footnotes of this episode. And you can also find us on any of your favorite podcast programs. If you can, please rate and review us there. It does help us out. It shows us in the 
search results of all of these places that allows us to be seen. And if you also feel like it, you can go to weberless.com forward slash shop, that's S-H-O-P, and you can uh, support us that way as well. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.